Hello everyone, so checkerboarding, straight upscaling, dynamic resolution, temporal supersampling, it's techniques like these that allow PlayStation 4 Pro to hand in some pretty awesome 4K gaming, even though, strictly speaking, it's not actually real 4K. I mean, you look at titles like Horizon Zero Dawn and the result is simply phenomenal. So if Sony's kind of unconventional approach to 4K rendering can work so well, I began to wonder, can PC games use the same techniques for even more impressive results? My intention here is pretty clear. Let's take Nvidia's GTX 1060, for example. It's more powerful than the PS4 Pro GPU by quite a margin. So I want to see better 4K results using the same or very similar rendering techniques. It's as simple as that. Okay, so a while back I got to read Sony's PS4 Pro documentation for developers and sub-native rendering is recommended as one potential strategy if native 4K is not possible. Now, for many PC users this is simply not acceptable and it isn't real 4K. Now, on the one hand, this is correct. It's not full fat ultra HD, but on the other, it is still a good way to use a 4K screen for a couple of reasons. First of all, the sheer pixel density of 4K screens is such that you're really gonna struggle to tell the difference even on detail rich content. This applies whether you're talking about a 27 inch or 32 inch PC monitor or a 55 inch 4K TV at living room viewing distances. So why expend GPU resources on pixels you may not even see when you can spend those resources instead on a better looking game or higher frame rates. To illustrate this difference, let's zoom in on an area of head to head capture here. Scaling technology is pretty good these days, so that combined with the tiny pixel pitch on an actual 4K screen, well, this makes the difference look rather subtle. We also need to consider the nature of LCD technology. The panels use a system called sample and hold, which means that resolution resolved is actually lower when the image is in motion. It means that in high speed scenes, you're not getting full resolution anyway, making a sub native resolution like 1800p even less noticeable in terms of a straight head to head comparison. But the question is, how do we get PC games to scale when most 4K screens don't allow you to select a resolution like 1800p? Well, there are two routes forward here. Many PC games have internal scalers for upscaling and uh, super sampling, like Battlefield 1 here. The footage you're seeing is running at 60 frames per second on a 4K output from an overclocked GTX 1060. Yup, a 1060. So, how have I done this? Well, let's take a look at the menu options. 3840 by 2160 4K output confirmed, but dipping into the advanced menu, you can see that I'm running at 80% resolution scale, effectively 3072 by 1728. For the record, 83% would get you up to 1800p. We're looking at a mixture of ultra, high and medium settings. Now, it's not native 4K, but it still looks great on a 4K screen. And I'm pretty sure that in almost all areas, we are exceeding PS4 Pro quality. It looks so good owing to DICE implementing a really high quality internal scaler, and also thanks to the use of temporal anti-aliasing. It's not just smoothing off edges here, it's kind of importing detail from previous frames. A different sort of super sampling, if you like. Combined with the high base resolution, we're getting a really nice image, and that's from a GTX 1060, a card normally recommended for 1080p gaming. Personally though, I think we can learn from the console versions in extracting the best bang for the buck, getting a good balance of resolution and visual features at very high frame rates. So, are there any drawbacks here? I'd like to be running post-processing at a higher setting, and this is by far the most taxing setting, and there are some minor frame rate drops in explosive scenes, which could be down to memory bandwidth issues. PS4 Pro has a dynamic resolution scaler that would be awesome to have on PC and would solve these minor performance issues. More on that later, but before we move on, remember that the settings adjustments and resolution scaling can of course be deployed on more powerful hardware. The GTX 1070 is an awesome 1440p card for example, and you can run at 83% resolution scale corresponding to 1800p, and everything bar post-process quality is ramped up to ultra. Performance is rock solid at 60 frames per second. Sub-native resolution will increase performance for all cards after all. Now let's get back to a GTX 1060 with its compromised visual settings at 80% resolution scale and stack it up against GTX 1080 Ti, 
running the same content maxed out. Yes, obviously the GTX 1080 Ti looks better, but not dramatically so. And after all, the 1060 is graphics hardware that is a fraction of the cost. The point is that by learning how developers are getting the best bang for the buck from lower power consoles, we can take that learning into the PC space and potentially get better results for more capable hardware. So obviously making internal resolution scalers standard in PC gaming would be ideal, but realistically it's not gonna happen. The question is, can the user do anything to achieve a 4K video output from their PC while the games internally render at a lower resolution? We're going to need a more refined solution from Nvidia and AMD to get the job done, but in the here and now, yes, you can do it. This is custom resolution utility. There's a link to it in the video description below. Using it is child's play. Load it up, make sure your monitor is selected at the top and that it's labeled active. Now under detailed resolutions, click add and in the horizontal and vertical areas add 3200 and 1800. Even though 4K TVs and monitors don't tend to support this resolution, we are gonna hack it in using this tool. Make sure the refresh rate is at 60 Hertz, click OK, quit the tool and then use the restart application to reboot the graphics driver. Go to the control panel and on Nvidia, select adjust desktop size and position. You need to ensure that the GPU is performing the scaling and that scaling mode is set to aspect ratio. OK that and you are good to go. So let's look at the results of this. This is the Witcher 3 running on GTX 1060. Here in the graphics menu, you can see that we've selected the newly available 1800p resolution. We're on ultra settings with hair works off and we're at 37 frames per second. We can actually run native 4K just about, but you lose 10 frames per second and this means that you will dip below 30 frames per second in the more taxing areas of the game. 1800p though, no problem whatsoever. So the question is, how good is NVIDIA's scaler? Well, I was actually a bit concerned about this. Scaling the user interface in particular can look rather rough, but let's do a native 4K versus 1800p close up here. The UI actually scales really nicely. Running at 1800p obviously looks a little softer, but on an actual 4K screen where pixel density is so stupendously high and where sample and hold is an issue, well, you've really got to work hard to tell the difference at a normal viewing distance. So again, GTX 1060, hair works apart, the game is maxed and looking great on a 4K screen and you can lock to 30 frames per second for more consistency. And let's remember CD Projekt Red never actually released a PS4 Pro update for this title, whereas the PC version will scale as much as you want. And yes, of course, throwing more GPU power at the game will open up even more opportunities from a visual perspective. So what's the takeaway here? Well, in our tests with PS4 Pro, Sony has proven that although native 4K is obviously where you'd want to be with gaming on an Ultra HD screen, lower resolutions can still work pretty nicely. 1800p is specifically mentioned in their documentation as a good compromise, and whether you're using an internal scaler like Battlefield 1 or hacking in custom resolutions, the fact is that GTX 1060 can surpass PS4 Pro results, allowing for a really decent presentation on a 4K screen. Okay then, so next up, let's talk checkerboarding. It's the process where a game renders half the pixels of a native presentation using smart upscaling to interpolate the rest. We've seen some pretty awesome implementations on PS4 Pro and Horizon Zero Dawn really is one of the absolute best, but the technique actually started out life before Pro was available. Ubisoft actually pioneered it in Rainbow Six Siege and it's also used in Watch Dogs 2. So yes, PC is invited along to the checkerboarding party. So PS4 Pro used checkerboard upscale to 1800p, then a GPU upscale to 4K. And we can do both of these techniques within the PC version of the game. Temporal filtering is Ubisoft's name for checkerboarding, and we can enable that. The pixel density option is just like the render scaling in Battlefield 1. So 83% there, takes us from 4K down to 1800p. But obviously you can configure this to your tastes. But it's the settings I've achieved that I'm really happy with. I started with ultra settings as a base, then dropped shadows to very high, turned off San Francisco fog, and enabled SMAA anti-aliasing and HBAO+. Screen space reflections are hugely taxing on performance, 
so I turned those down to medium and they're actually gone completely on the PS4 Pro version. Frame rates in dense areas are in the 30 to 40 FPS territory. I ran this locked with a 30 FPS cap and the experience was excellent. A clear upgrade over the Pro in all areas. Now obviously if you want to trade some of those settings for higher resolution or higher frame rates that's fine. And that's another key advantage I love here about adapting these techniques for PC gaming. You, the user, can choose the balance points in terms of quality versus performance, tailoring it to your own preferences or the limits of your hardware. Now at this point there's a very compelling argument that PC hardware can outpro the pro, uh, but there's one more trick we see in console games that I really want to see migrate across to PC dynamic resolution scaling. So going back to Battlefield 1 on GTX 1060, I was able to get a mostly stable 60 frames per second, but scenes with big explosions or really heavy alpha effects could see our frame rates drop. In these fleeting situations, I prefer the game to dynamically lower the resolution instead of allowing the frame rate to drop. Battlefield 1 does this on consoles, but the option, unfortunately, isn't available to PC owners. However, Titanfall 2 does support the feature and it demonstrates just how superb it actually is. Again, I'm using GTX 1060 here. Initially, I set up a 3200 by 1800 custom resolution in order to tweak settings so we are at 60 frames per second for the vast majority of gameplay at that crucial resolution threshold. Settings compromises are required. Sun shadow detail has to go, as does ambient occlusion. And that's similar to what's happening in the console versions. Otherwise, though, we're looking good, mostly 60 frames frames per second but there are some drops. Now I can attempt to further lower the settings to maintain consistency but the fact is I'd be losing that quality all of the time even though I'm only losing frame rate for some of the time. So instead I can change the adaptive resolution FPS target to 60 and just let the game change the resolution on the fly smoothing over the more taxing areas of the game. It works beautifully but here's the thing while I've targeted 1800p for my settings here I can now go to full 4k output and just keep the dynamic resolution scaler on safe in the knowledge that for the most part I'll be at 1800p but with even higher resolution when things are less busy. And for the record, the most intense scenes seem to reach around 1500p. The title looks momentarily softer, but that's okay. I'd prefer that to dropping settings. Now, on top of that, the temporal anti-aliasing technique used here tends to make the game look a little soft anyway, even at native 4K. Right then, after all of that testing, what's the takeaway? First of all, there was a huge leap from 1440p displays to 4K in terms of pixel counts. But whether we're talking about living room TVs or desktop monitors, the actual size of those screens has remained much the same. Far higher pixel density combined with sample and hold techniques used in display refreshes means that subnative resolutions are just as viable on PC as they are on PlayStation 4 Pro. And in turn, this brings mainstream cards like GTX 1060 and RX 580 into contention. I reckon even an overclocked GTX 970 could do pretty well. But to get the best possible results, we need to see PC developers and graphics card vendors embrace some of the technologies that we've seen here. First of all, it would be child's play for NVIDIA and AMD to support 1800p and other arbitrary resolutions at the driver level. Think of it as a reverse DSR or VSR if you like, injecting sub 4K resolutions and then using the GPU scaler to take us out to the required 4K output. Without this technology, most screens jump from 1440p to 4K with no in-between points, and that's not great. But ideally, I'd like to see more games employ internal resolution scalers, either for super sampling or upscaling. Now, the key advantage here is that the HUD elements on screen will always render at native res, looking clean and crisp. Secondly, checkerboarding techniques can be deployed on PC. Watch Dogs 2 proves that it works beautifully and the 35% uplift to performance with only a very minor hit to image quality is clearly a win-win. Now I'm not entirely sure that such technology could be built into the GPU driver, but it could be a plugin of sorts that Nvidia or AMD could develop that could be 
open sourced and handed to developers to do with as they please. Now I should point out that Ubisoft used this technology on the console versions of Rainbow Six Siege and even at 1080p it looks pretty good, meaning that it could be useful for more than just 4K support. Finally, dynamic resolution scaling is getting more popular on consoles. Even Zelda on the Switch uses it, but it's actually very rare for this technology to roll out onto the PC versions of console games that support it, and I'd really like to see this change. At the very least, it could be considered like a, an insurance policy of sorts to ensure rock solid frame rates. I was blown away by how well this worked in Titanfall 2 and indeed Gears of War 4. We know that the tech exists for DICE's Frostbite engine because it's deployed in Battlefield 1 on Xbox One and PS4. Now, I reckon that adding that support to PC should, in theory at least, be pretty easy, and obviously it is a no-brainer based on the results we saw with Titanfall 2. But that's where I'm gonna leave things for now. Now, I know a lot of you PC guys are kinda skeptical about PS4 Pro's 4K output, but when it's done well, it amounts to free performance for only a minor trade in visual quality. And if that trade means you can use a mainstream card like a GTX 1060 on a 4K screen, that can only be a good thing, right? It can also mean good things for higher end cards too, of course. And remember, because you're on PC, you can still run most games at 1080p, 60 frames per second on Ultra, if that's your bag. And that's kind of the cool thing about PC. The choice is yours. What I'm trying to illustrate here is that embracing the techniques seen on Pro only adds more choice to PC gaming. Okay then, so that's my pitch and I hope you found it interesting. Please do like and subscribe to support Digital Foundry and also consider supporting our Patreon where you can download all of our videos in pristine quality. In fact, maybe try downloading this one and see how our 4K tests look on your 4K screen. But for now, thanks for watching.